And now big old I knew he was mad, so I finally picked up the phone. He said, what the hell did you do? And I said, well, Dave, I told you I didn't want to go. And he said, they loved you. <laughs> so that's how I got the role for my first horror film. Needless to say, it didn't work on the next audition. The attitude did not work. So that's how I got it. Back to answer your question, I know you didn't want this big, long, encyclopedia uh, speechologist, but yeah. Any more questions? Actually, my favorite scene was two of them. It was when, um... Oh, what? Oh, he's a... Yeah. See, them did... Okay. My favorite film, uh, scene was two of them. One was when we was in the hospital room when they took me out where I said, oh, yeah, he asked my dick is killing me. That was my favorite scene because we was all there together. The other one was when I was in the um, room saying, and you know, so that was uh, my favorite. <laughs> so I that was my favorite. Now let's get to everything else. Look at those easy ass pretty over there. You know, <laughs> just, just a punk. Just a big old juicy punk. Look at him. Heels up. You got a question, Tony? You got a question? Well, welcome to prime time, is all I can say. <laughs> I hate to tell you. I hate to tell you, but prime time starts at 7 p.m. <laughs> it's like midday. See, 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 see what I mean? Bring it down. <laughs> prime, welcome to prime time. Okay. Even if you was in the West Coast, it still would not be prime time. Okay, any more questions? Let's talk about your mama. That, yes. Well, I'm going to step out of character for a minute. <clears throat> so, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 and Part 2 were, I feel, a lot darker. And Freddy was a lot more serious. It wasn't really until part three where he started with the puns and the jokes and took a little bit of a lighter spin on Freddy and he made him, I think, more likable. Some people like the darker, meaner Freddy, but I actually like the fact that he had jokes. He, he was like the king of the one-liners. He was like Arnold and everybody else. Before he made his kill, he, he put a joke out and you were a big part of that because you were in part three where it all started. And also, probably as one of the first African-American featured in the Elm Street franchise. Am I right on that? That's right. So that's wait, wait, a big wait, wait. deal. Brother, brother, it's about me and you now. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's about I me and you. Over the crowd okay, Sorry. Let's repeat that, would you please? I was oh, loud brother, brother, <laughs> it's about me and you now, all right? Not bragging. Well, yeah, anyway, the, the film... You know, it, that was a, a milestone, a big step, and... Uh, you took a punch now. <laughs> now, I just wanted to know if the, you know, what made the directors or the writers of Freddy go in that direction and, and make him take on the more comedic role, and as you were one of the funniest... No, he was the funniest guy in part three. I mean, we were shocked when he heard your lines. He's like, hey, a real person. That's how I would react. Like, Freddy didn't mess with me, you know. And you were just such a relief. We're like, yes, some, that's how I would be if Freddy was chasing after me. I'd be like, oh dear, run. You were like, stay away from me, Freddy. You, know, you, you just brought some realism to it. I just was wondering what 
how the director uh, or the writers came to that decision to make Freddie go in that direction. I don't know if they came in a decision to make him go in that direction. I think some things happen is that when you, uh, as an actor, when you're on there, you see that that actor can take it to a place that you wasn't going to take it with creativity. I think if they had used a white actor that perhaps it would have had a different take. Not that the actor would have been bad, but I think that I had a, a different take. I think people could relate to me because I wasn't trying, I didn't want no crazy, my dream wasn't crazy. My dream was strength. That was something that everybody could relate to. And I get messages all over the world, literally, about Ken Kate and his strength. And Ken Kate could talk trash, fact, you know, he could, but he could talk the mama jokes. He, he, he was a survivor and he was not going to let you take him down without a fight. And I think that's what it was. Also, with the one thing I think about part three and part four, not bragging, they make the most money. Those were the two I was in, but not bragging. <laughs> you know, but part three had some of everything in it. It had mental health in it. It had jokes in it. It had depression in it. It had unity in it. It had what you had to do. It covered everything. It covered civil rights. It covered everything in just a little bit. And I think that was one of the reasons that that movie was so popular. Also, I think it gave homage to the old horror films. You know, I think it touched on something. I think that everybody could relate to something in Nightmare 3. And uh, I'm glad that I was a part of that. You know. Did you improvise any of the, the one-liners or the jokes or anything that was uh, said? Yes, I, I did. But as a writer myself, I, gave, I knew that I had to I respect another writer's work. But so the director gave me, well, first of all, not the only director, but uh, Wes Craven, the writers, gave me leeway to change it because of when he said that I can write all I want to, but I am not a black person. I can be as creative. So you can give those little nuances in there without taking away what he wrote. And I just, like, hey, Freddie, where you at, you, Mark, hey, pussy, you know, and all that. That was a little ad lib. 